Okay, we're here with our defensive coordinator, Peter Sermon. Uh, as always, just please let me know in the chat if you have a question, and we'll call you on order from there. We'll go ahead and get started with uh, Trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah, good morning, Coach. Good morning, Trace. I wanted to ask about uh, how you feel uh, Mo performed in his first start there at Inside Linebacker. Yeah, you know, uh, Mo did some good things. Uh, he's uh, he had a, a few times that he deviated with, from some of the technique stuff that we've we've talked about, but uh, you can see some of his athleticism. Um, you know, he was around, he was involved in the sack, um, and then he also had a nice drop that uh, he and Josh Drayden kind of combined for a, a pass deflection. Um, so uh, I, I think he's progressing nicely. Uh, there's a lot for him to improve on, but uh, the way he handled it and the way he's been uh, developing, we've been pleased. Yeah, and with that, I think you guys only played something like 14 different players on the defensive side of the ball this past uh, game. How is there a want to get more guys in there, or are, do you feel like you're limited by depth, or guys aren't ready, or how is that situation working out? Uh, kind of, kind of all of it. You know, right now we're, uh, you know, the the sole focus is continuing to to uh, put the guys in that we feel are ready to help us win games. And, uh, you know, this is not just uh, an exclusive issue for us, but with the lack of spring football and the lack of a traditional camp, um, it's been uh, more of a challenge to develop, um, you know, the younger, more inexperienced players. You know, that's with, uh, with Luke Beckett, you know, transferring and then leaving, losing uh, Evan and Jayhawk and uh, Ashton and Travion Beck, um, you know, those are those are positions that you know there was a lot of reps invested in, and there wasn't a lot of people playing behind them, quite honestly. And uh, the, that's you know kind of you're you're seeing the uh, you know the the product of of not getting those young guys uh, the traditional development that that we would like. Um, we're always looking at developing the guys that we currently have, and when we feel they give us an opportunity to help win the game, uh, they will play. Do you feel like anyone's reached that point of being able to help you win games in the past week or so more than had they have already been? I think guys are always developing. You know, there's been some guys kind of in and out with uh, some different, um, you know, issues with being able to practice, you know. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot of young guys that we feel uh, that have bright futures ahead, and we just got to continue to develop them in practice. And, and when their opportunities come, uh, we'll see how they do. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to Shaylin Singh from the Daily Cow. Hey, Coach. Now through uh, three games, can you evaluate Elijah Hicks's transition to safety? What have you liked from him, and what do you want to still see him improve on as the season goes on? You know, the the effort in which Elijah always plays um, is something that, that uh, you know, we show the rest of the defense. Um, the way he handles uh, the communication, the maturity that he um, demonstrates, uh, and the, the way he can adjust and the way we can talk to him on the sidelines um, to make in-game in, uh, adjustments is, has been real positive. Um, the safety position and the corner position, uh, you know, they get lumped in together. Uh, but I would, I would suspect if you talk to him, um, you know, he'd be able to really um, do a good job of explaining uh, the differences in them. You know, it's, it's, uh, I kind of equate it to guys that play outside linebacker and inside linebacker. Um, some guys are more trained at an outside in vision than they are seeing, you know, seeing the total picture like you are at safety or inside linebacker. And he's continuing uh, to improve on that. And, you know, the way he works, um, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing that I don't think he can improve on. Uh, but overall, we, we all have to play better. You know, for us to win games, we need to play better because the results aren't where they are or where they should be. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to Max Frankie from Bear Insider. Coach, uh, we've seen an uh, improvement on the defensive line, I think, through the first three games. Um, the first game, there were no sacks. Then second game against OSU, one sack. And then now against Stanford, four sacks. Would you say that the defensive line has shown improvement? And would you say that going into this week, um, they're continuing to improve with uh, more contact and uh, training. Yeah, I mean, then it's fair, Max. Uh, you know, the sacks aren't always a, a perfect indication uh, of how they're playing, but it is a 
it is definitely a way to measure, you know, disruptive plays and, and creating negative plays. Uh, the first week, as you know, everyone on the Zoom call knows, is um, uh, not a fair way to assess uh, the D line. Um, and then as we've we've played more, uh, I think we've gotten, uh, like I said, I think we've improved. Uh, those guys are taking uh, uh, the bulk of of the reps in practice and the bulk of the reps in the games. And, uh, you know, the toughness they've demonstrated and the way they practice and the way they've handled themselves is, you know, we're real proud of them. Uh, but it was great to get uh, more disruption in the, in the uh, more of the drop back pass game, you know, getting some sacks. I thought the guys in the back end, if you look at a couple of them, uh, you know, Mills was going through his first read, had to, had to try to get to the second and third read and, and uh, he just pulled the ball down and, and those guys did a nice job of getting them on the ground. Thanks, Coach. Hey, we'll go back to Trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah, you said something with uh, Hicks moving from corner to safety that kind of uh, made me think of what Coin did on Friday with uh, playing some outside linebacker. How has I, – I know it's probably not a permanent change as far as you need him at inside linebacker, but in having him out there, what were kind of the uh, – what was the reasoning to put him there and how do you feel he adjusted to that position? Yeah, you, we're having to get uh, creative in some of our spacing. You know, we saw Coin play against uh, what we call 22 or, or their 23T, which is essentially 22, but they had a, a six offensive lineman out there. Uh, and you know what he what he does um, with his length. You know, he was he was difficult to block. He had some really good uh, one on one situations. He thought he was a body type. Um, and then when Coin moved outside, we popped up uh, Blake Anzalatas to play. Um, some will linebacker and I wanted to get an opportunity to see him on the field. He's been uh, some doing some really nice things in practice. So uh, with the lack of some of the size and some of the, you know, some of the, just the numbers issue with kind of that outside defensive end um, position, I thought coin was a perfect candidate. Um, you know, we kept it, uh, you know, right in his wheelhouse of, of understanding what he needs to do in that situation. I believe we played it uh, 14 to 15 times. Thank you. Then we'll go to Jake Curtis from Cal Sports Report. Yeah, Peter, could you talk about uh, Shug's uh, strengths and also uh, Verdell, who I guess is going to play and, and die? Yeah, I think the quarterback's doing an effective job, uh, you know, using his feet. Uh, I know Coach Moorhead does a really nice job with some of the quarterback design runs, uh, you know, and putting – putting some edge defenders in, in some conflicts uh, with, you know, you see the speed option, you see some, we call pork, you know, some of the power read game, um, you know, so those are always challenges when that, you know, when they're uh, having some design quarterback runs. Um, and I think he's throwing the ball effectively, you know, he's distributing the ball. Uh, they have opportunities that he throws the ball downfield. Um, you know, one got loose against uh, Oregon state on a, on a, a middle open kind of concept and he threw a good ball. Um, so he's got good arm strength. Uh, I think he's doing a good job of, of uh, moving the ball, I guess, with his feet is the way to say it. And then, uh, you know, the running backs, I think, are, are, are really good for, for what they're doing, both Verdell and, and Die, and uh, even 33. They're, they're all downhill physical runners that attack the line of scrimmage. And uh, to run what they do, uh, I think you need that type of mentality. And, and uh, they're all doing a very, very effective job of, of running downhill. And can you talk briefly about their three wideouts who have been pretty productive? Yeah, you know, the uh, the wideouts have, they all have, you know, good speed. Um, you know, uh, Devon has obviously good size. Um, but, you know, the with, with Jalen and Johnny Johnson and, and with Pittman, you know, getting back involved, um, you know, there's four guys that, uh, you know, can give you different size and speed matchup concerns. Thank you. Uh, Ashley Adamson, Pac-12 Networks. Hey, Coach, you, you sort of answered the question I was going to ask you about, Shuck, but I guess just generally speaking, as, as you watch the film, what's the biggest challenge that Oregon's offense presents you guys? You know, they got great size up front, and the tempo in which they, they the downhill run game is going to come at us, um, you know, and then the ability for them to go to tempo, you know, I, I think that's the, you know, our biggest challenge is, is getting lined up you know, getting the call, um, and then the the downhill run game. You know, the pistol is a um, as a defensive coordinator. You know, that's something that is is unique. Um, you know, when when it's run effectively, 
uh, that that thing gets going pretty fast, you know, and, and they have great size, the offensive line. So you're going to see some, you know, some displacement, um, you know, from the first level of defense, you know, at, that, at the defensive line position. And the linebackers have to do a great job of, of fitting and fixing the the D line. Um, and then just, I guess, generally speaking, I'm curious just kind of where the locker room's at right now. Obviously, it's not the start that you guys wanted, and there's been a bunch of stuff certainly out of your control that's contributed to that. But what's um, what's your sense of where the guys are at sort of from a mental standpoint right now? Practice was great yesterday. You know, it's uh, I, I think the barometer for me um, is, is preparation and practice. Um, and they have never um, – it never surprised me with, you know, coming out and not having the energy or the, or the necessary enthusiasm. Um, you know, this, the, the results aren't um, what we want. You know, I think we continue to get better. And I think what uh, Coach Wilcox has done a good job is, is uh, we're continuing to coach them very hard. We're continuing to coach them with extreme detail on not just, you know, raising your voice, but how are we going to improve? What do you individually uh, as a player need to do improve uh, as a position coach, as a play caller? You know, it's, uh, it's all about remedying and putting ourselves in, in better position to win games. And I think uh, Justin's really provided some good leadership and, uh, you know, what he expects from, from the, the coaches and, and how we're going to equip our players to play uh, better football and winning football. Thanks, Coach. Can we go back to Trace Travers from Rivals? Yeah, you mentioned, uh, if I heard this right, a middle open concept that Oregon runs. What, is, what does that mean? No, that was that was Trace. That was more uh, Oregon State ran some quarters, Oregon some middle State. opens. Uh, okay. you know, they ran a, a, a switch vert on an over route, and, and uh, Oregon State, I think they might have cut somebody free. And just I'm just saying on, on that ball, they did a nice job of stretching the field. Yeah, and you guys see switch verticals in practice from your offense. Does that kind of help you with? Uh, I mean, I know it's not the same system, obviously, that Morehead runs up there, but yeah, does seeing you know, some of that stuff help? There's, there's, there's a lot more similarity in the pass game in our conference than uh, than the run game. You know, uh, pass game to me is just is this time and space. Um, some of the formations and some of the you know the the ways they get to it off of motions or like I said, some uh, pre-snap alignments, but, you know, if you go through the, if you go through the conference, there's a lot of similarities in, in uh, the drop back and even the quick passing game. Awesome. Thank you so much. Here we go back to Max Frankie from Barron Center. Yeah. Going back to the mentality of uh, the defense coach, um, you know, obviously on Saturday, a lot of the unforced errors weren't um, the defense's fault. You know, that was like offensive and special teams. Um, you know, to say the least, the defense played pretty well. What would you say is the mentality of the defense specifically of going into this game against Oregon? Yeah, I think the mentality of the defense was, you know, um, try to stop the run, you know, which I think uh, we ended up being under 100 yards, which um, gives you an opportunity to, to play the pass um, and really is trying to get into good third downs. You know, we uh, we actually we had, we had 12 um, third downs between three and six, which – you know, you want the six pluses, seven pluses. Uh, we had two over 10 and we won uh, both of those. The third and three to sixes, we were at a 50-50 clip on that. Um, so um, the mentality of, of where we were, I thought the, the guys battled. Uh, where we need to continue to improve is we need to gain some short fields for the offense. We need to be more violent taking the football away. And then uh, when our opportunities to, to rise up in some of the sudden changes uh, that you're speaking of, some of the short fields are – or the uh, unscheduled possessions, um, we need to we need to have those uh, those possession ending kicks, you know, punts and field goals. Thanks, coach. Hey, uh, Jake Curtis. Yeah, just curious. You mentioned that the pistol is presents specific challenges. Can can you elaborate on that? Why is that? Well, there's some things that, you know, uh, you watch a lot of college football, the flow of the runs um, generally um, coincide with, with the offset back, either the depth of the back uh, or the side of the back, or uh, what we talk here is the Y T. So the Y is the, the tail or the tight end for us. The T is the running back. So the Y T relationship 
um, will tell you a lot about the flow of the runs and the expectations uh, of our defense on what runs we're expecting to play. Um, there's a lot of relationships that really virtually eliminate uh, some of the run concepts because of the, the relationship of the Y and the T and the, some of the insertion points uh, that you can run the ball at. Uh, Pistol does a good job of hiding it. There is no relationship, you know, so it's a, it's a balanced formation in the sense of if you align in four down spacing, you know, you have to figure out where you can, where am I going to set my three technique? Um, you know, where am I going to set some of those, those calls? If you're a four down defense that, that everything begins in the run game with where you want the bubble, where do you want the three, where do you want the G? Um, so those things, uh, they do a good job of pre-snap, uh, not giving a tell. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Max Frankie, I think, has another question. Go ahead, Max. Coach, there was that fumble in the uh, second half. I think it was one of the running backs um, who dropped the ball, and then uh, Stanford got the ball in the Cal Bear half, and then it was like three or four plays um, on offense, and then they had a touchdown. Could you talk about what went wrong defensively um, on that series, on that drive? Well, I mean, it's it's execution in those situations. Um, you know, it's uh, I thought we've done a, a substantially better job of of minimizing the what we call the mental errors or just the the bust plays. Um, and you know, there's not you know without getting very specific with you know going back and and telling everybody what exactly we're running and, and how we're fitting things. Uh, it's it's uh, execution. It's an execution issue. Thanks, okay. Coach. Um, let's see. Anybody else have a final question for Coach Sermon? If you do, let me give you about three seconds in the chat. Doesn't look like we have anything. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it, Coach. Okay. Thanks, guys. Stay okay. safe. Thanks, okay. Coach. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks, Coach.